All right, we'll call this select board meeting to order for October 16th, 2019. Dive right into our consent agenda. We have warrants, AP 2015. And then we have a lot of one day liquor licenses for top of the campus. So I'll start with the top of the campus hockey games, pond club area in the Mullen Center, alt alcohol for 10, 18, 10, 19, 10, 25, 11, 2, 11, 16, 11, 22, 11, 30, 12, 6, and 12, 7 of 2019. Then we have one day liquor license for top of the campus hockey games, concourse concessions, wine and malt only. That is for 10, 18, 10, 19, 10, 25, 11, 2, 11, 16. 1122, 1130, 126, 12, and 127 12, of 2019. Then we have the top of the campus men's basketball games, court club area, all alcohol. It is for 1029, 11, 5, 11, 12, 11, 16, 11, 20, 12, 4, 12, 11, and 12, 20 of 2019. Then we have one day liquor licenses for top of the campus men's basketball games concourse concession wine and malt and then that would be for 1029 11 5 11 12 11 16 11 20 12 4 12 11 12 20 2019 then we finally have one day liquor licenses for top of the campus women's basketball games concourse concession wine and malt only for 1028, 11, 5, 11, 9, 11, 17, 11, 21, 12, 5, 12, 8, 12, 15, and 12, 30 of 2019. Then we have two more, one for top of the campus. The one for top of the campus is actually a revision to the time. They, <clears throat> excuse me, asked for the license on October 26th till 7 30 they're asking to extend the license till 9 30 that night okay. um they're holding a dinner after the homecoming game at the in the room so they're asking for two additional hours on the license so that's for the jim and helen hunt room uh in mcgurk stadium okay and was there one more that there is one? this one came in yesterday afternoon and the event's being held before you have another meeting so i'm asking you to take it um it's for the western mass climbers uh, coalition they are showing a film for a fundraiser at Central Rock Gym on November 2nd uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. They have done this, I believe, three other times in the last two years. Um, everybody has seen and approved. Okay. Um, so. And it's wine and malt, that one? This one is wine and malt. Okay. That's correct. Great. Motion approved. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, I'll just quickly open it up for public comment. Anybody is here for public comment tonight? Nobody? Okay. Move on to. We have the 645 Russell School Ad Hoc Building Committee. We'll wait 10 minutes on that. Um, how quickly is the revenue forecast, do you believe, David? Uh, I, can, is that? I can do it in about 10 minutes. Right? Okay. So I'll review uh, preliminary revenue forecast for the fiscal year 2021, which would be July 1st, 2020, and this is through June 30th, 2021, right now? Okay. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah, I guess. That would make sense. That is the fiscal year, but is it July 1st, 20? Oh, okay. July 1st, 2020. <laughs> I'm thinking 2019 we're looking until now, but this yeah. is a forecast. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, so the chair asked me to start working on the FY 2021 budget in October. Um, and the first step of that would be to review the re projected revenues. Just want to say that this is um, something that we can start doing right now, but the revenue estimates are very early uh, we haven't seen much in the way of uh, information coming out of the state and um, <clears throat> local revenues are obviously based upon uh, our, uh, performance i had hoped to have the first quarter revenues for fy20 
uh, available for us today, but we'll have to wait for another time. So table one is the property tax levy. It consists of four numbers. The first number, $11,547,027. Uh, that is a straightforward addition of uh, the prior year's tax levy, proposition two and a half, and new growth. Those numbers together add up to the 11 million five hundred and some odd thousand. Uh, two and a half percent of that is 288,676. Uh, and then the next uh, number is a discretionary number. This is a forecast on my part. $185,000 of new growth. Uh, by comparison, if nothing was happening in Hadley, there wasn't any major buildings going on, that number would be somewhere around 120,000. So we're looking at something a little bit more than um, uh, a town without any real activity going on at all. Uh, that number could drift upward based upon some of the projects that we see coming down the pipe, um, but it's a good conservative starting place. And then the debt exclusions of $1.2 million and change, that's a number that I get from Linda. David, can I just ask on that one, does that include anything that might be on the warrant now for a debt exclusion? Or is that just status quo, it looks like? No, that, that, in, that is what is a true today. Uh, so if there's future debt exclusion votes, um, that would be, that would impact the tax rate in FY 2021, that would be an addition to that. Right. So this, the, anything that's on special town meeting warrant is not in there. So that could go up a little bit. Right, but it's more likely that that impact would be deferred <coughs> until 2022. Okay. So, and again, the, uh, the commitment to the town is trying to keep that uh, debt exclusion as stable as possible. So you only see a thousand dollar difference between projected 2020 and 2021. All told from the taxes, about uh, $472,000 and change, representing a total increase of 3.71%. Table two is estate aid. This is money that we get on the cherry sheet. Um, this, is, um, uh, this is a conservative projection. I uh, estimated that our education formula, chapter 70 money, will increase by 5%. All of the accounts will be kept at 0% increase except for uh, the unrestricted general government aid, which I've been, you know, I projected a 1% increase for a total of 2.83% increase, 68, called $69,000. Uh, obviously, as we get closer to the governor's budget release in January, late January, these numbers will become a little bit more transparent. Uh, it is an election year, and we tend to see more uh, local aid come through in an election year. So we could be seeing a boost there. Table three are the local hey, receipts. That debt exclusion line? Yep. It's not $1,000. It should be $100,000. He meant from this year to next year. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Because that was the big All right. building job. Yeah, I see. Table three of the local receipts. And these are le receipts that we generate locally. Uh, and I've tried to be conservative with these projections, but looking at past history, I look at a total increase of uh, $192,000 with 6.41%. This includes the uh, ambulance. Uh, uh, rebate at $138,000, which seems to be conservative, and the marijuana host, um, I'm sorry, $250,000, which would be uh, the ambulance uh, rebate, and then the medical uh, marijuana host agreement at $50,000, which would be the minimum according to that agreement that we just signed. The um, hotel tax? Yep. And I know you're being conservative, but just <clears throat> we really just had the um, Homewood Suites come online, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then also the roadway. 
Isn't that going to be? That's going to be demolished and redone. Yeah. yeah. So I would think that that, that line would probably go up. Probably. Uh, and again, I wanted to see the first quarter of uh, revenues. Uh, mm -hmm. Hotel and meals are performing strongly for the first payment from the state in FY20. Um, we have 612 rooms available in the town of Hadley. Uh, that's like half the rooms available in the county. Um, and they generate about $1,300 a year in revenue for us, each room. Yeah. Each room, then. Each room, $1,300. Yeah. Our meals tax was very strong this uh, past uh, <coughs> payment. Uh, and I'm estimating that the uh, Restaurants are pushing about three and a half, and a half million dollars worth of meals every single month. Um, it doesn't seem to be a slow season or a busy season. They just keep on doing it. This is good. It's other people's money. Five thousand Hadley residents are not spending three million dollars on meals in, in Hadley. So could be our secret shame. <laughs> <laughs> um, Later on, I'll talk about ways that we can maybe augment these uh, these revenues. Uh, but for right now, let's go through this because um, this is our first glimpse of the future. Enterprise receipts. Okay, so I've kept the administrative cost level because we don't know where that's going to go. Looking at a 5% increase for water and sewer revenue. Um, and you'll see that the wastewater jumps by 170 seven thousand dollars that's because in fy20 we're proposing to use sewer impact fees to keep the pressure off the rate uh, i've not made that calculation for this estimate um certainly can um but that uh, really represents a five percent increase even though it says a 22 percent increase there all told, um, revenues seem to be coming in at $966,000 for the entire budget, which represents a 3.26% increase. So I think last year we had the Financial Management Team and Finance Committee look at this before we kind of said, okay, this is the number we're running yep. with. Are you still planning on doing that? Yeah. But I thought this would lead us into a discussion about uh, priorities for the coming year. This um, Department of Public Works is next on your priority list. I know that we've treated and uh, given them some uh, boost for the special town meeting. Um, but it's a starting place to start talking about how we want to use whatever money uh, will be available. This does not include any transfers from stabilization, free cash, other kinds of funds, CPA, et cetera. And this also assumes status quo relative to um, any any policies or um, zoning, right? Mm -hmm. Zoning, one way to look at property taxes is whether or not we're leaving any type of revenue <coughs> off the table because we don't, we're not zoning for certain types of Mm -hmm. constructions. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that we can really have that conversation with the planning board and maybe the Pine Valley Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. We are talking to got an email from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission today about setting up a meeting to talk about some possibilities. Just the housing? Yeah, the yeah. housing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And, and keeping in mind that nothing outside of what for build up. We determined that many years ago we did not want businesses to oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, expand yeah. outside of the Route 9 yeah. border. I, I keep bringing up the housing housing, uh, housing stuff and, mm -hmm. and you know we don't allow for really condo buildings and condos, condos mm -hmm. in particular. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the over fifty five has underscored the desire that's out there for people to find some opportunity to downsize. <coughs> um, and we don't allow for mixed use either, you know, so just thinking about what we really want Route 9 to look like, mm -hmm. you know, down the road here. We need to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. How is wastewater going up by 5% if we're not changing the rate? Is that based on assumption of 
getting more users? Getting more users, um, getting more flows, uh, um, looking at uh, looking at ways of uh, reducing the um, extraneous um, water in the system, which makes it difficult to process and fills up the capacity of the plant. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Any other questions or looking at that? Okay. All right. So we're at 6:45. Past there. So Russell School ad hoc building committee. My computer is running slow, but uh, Claire Carlson from the Municipal Building Committee is here, and would like to discuss the scope of this committee and the timeline you've prepared. Um, and we have four letters of interest from residents to serve on this committee. So. Yeah, so uh, the Municipal Building Committee, we, we were very happy to get four residents that apply right away. That's good for a town committee. And um, we think they're very good candidates. They have, two of them have, are on the Finance Committee. Um, one uh, applicant is uh, on the, I think the Building Committee, or maybe he's a library trustee. Mm -hmm. And then another uh, person who is a resident helped do some mixed use um, reuse buildings in Amherst oh, including okay. the co-working space at the bank mm -hmm. so some good um, good some good candidates we wanted to discuss with you um, the goals the municipal building committee has is to work with um, the, the subcommittee and then invite some consultants in and perhaps have a few focus group meetings I've reached out to Shannon Walsh, who's the Historic Preservation Planner at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. <coughs> She's given me some um, avenues to look for for um, how municipalities have reused historic buildings. And so we'd like to have invite her to a meeting. We'd like to have the timeline. We'd like to have a maybe meet once a month for six months and then come up through and then go to the Municipal Building Committee and come up with some suggestions and perhaps have some focus groups and with and what encouraging residents to, to uh, you know citizens to come mm -hmm. give feedback so um, that's where we're at right now and uh, we'd like for you to I think I talked with Jennifer about would this be an ad hoc committee or a appointed and sign the pledge kind of committee and you know what what um, what the select board, <laughs> what you know, you know, you get the little yellow card. I'm not sure if, if the select board wants it to be an official subcommittee or an ad hoc committee. I think ad hoc's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Claire, I don't know if um, I sent the name of somebody who has done some work in, with some of the folks in Amherst who's really knowledgeable about various types of um, grant and public program opportunities for, for these types of things. I sent it to Tim, and Tim Nyhart thought that uh, that might be another resource that you might want to tap okay. into. So um, I can either forward it to you or if you just want to ask Tim. Sure. Yeah, like to, uh, yeah that show would be good. Do you think it's possible to set a kind of a timeline for making a recommendation of maybe June, July next year? Do you think that's enough time to put things together? Or maybe by fall town meeting or special town meeting, in 2020, I'm just trying I think, to put a timeline. Yeah, on I think this. by the, this summer we could probably have some recommendations to then try to work through what we might need to put on a town meeting for the fall. Okay. Can, yeah. can we put a goal of like July? We'll see July 1st, 2020, yeah. of having, mm -hmm. and that way at least yeah. we have something to shoot for. Yeah. And with an ad hoc committee, I think it's good to have a tight timeline. Yeah. We don't want to lose them. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, summer. Yeah. And then, yeah. how often would you want to come into the would you want to come into the select board periodically and talk to us about where you guys are at, or yeah. just to kind of keep you on track? Or I think so. I think um, what was it now? It's mid October. Mm -hmm. I think we'd have to get a chance to get a meeting going, and I could see maybe coming reporting back in December or January. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, cool. see how we're going. Tell you what's happening. We want to have a few meetings first. Yeah. And then we were also looking at possibly having some money for this committee. Was that? Yeah, so vote on that. there is, there is uh, $25,000 available for an OPM uh, to help out with this project. So some, 
some professional help um, could be used out of that, uh, that money. Okay. But it would have to go through us. <coughs> So maybe maybe if we were to meet in January, if you guys right. identified some mm -hmm. services you'd need mm -hmm. or something along those lines, yeah. maybe we could do something at that point with that money. Okay. I think it does still have to get town meeting. No, it doesn't. We just did the transfer. So okay. Okay, that's good. And the other thing, I also I think I I might have emailed this. Oh no, we talked about it at our meeting, our municipal building committee meeting. We we've invited a Hopkins Academy student to apply to be on the committee and I've sent the announcement to the principal who's having it announced through the history and politics and American government civics classes to see if we can get uh, a student on the committee so great. I haven't heard back yet but yeah. um, we'll let you know if we get one that's great <laughs> so, nice. or when we get one <laughs> yeah. not yet um, one other question for the money for the engineering consultant the ten thousand dollars or, or yeah. the, the old CPA money that yeah. was so is that all set where they can go and do you guys have what you need to get I guess Larry Tuttle or whoever yeah. to kind of assess what the cost will be to fix yeah. everything up okay. I think yeah. the budget of that we had estimated eight to ten thousand for that purpose okay yeah. there's plenty of money in that particular account for that yeah Do we want to mention who do we want to make a take a vote on the members? Sure. Of, and sure. appoint them to the ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't need to. You don't have to appoint for ad hoc. I mean, well, I think it, well I you think actually actually do because do. yeah, for insurance purposes and for personal purposes. We still volunteers. <coughs> Sorry, I've misunderstood then from the clerk. Okay. Yeah. All right, appoint away. I'm ready. <laughs> Sorry. So make a motion. Uh, make a motion to. Uh, Recommend uh, Alexi Levine, Valerie Hood, Alan Weinberg, and Dylan Nance. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I can't wait to see how, you, how it comes along. management team reviewed the accounting services options um, and, uh, we have a meeting scheduled for noon time on October 30th uh, we're looking at the options of sharing a service with a neighboring town going through the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission uh, and I'm interviewing uh, private firms right now for that service so everything is moving forward and I'll have more to discuss with the financial management team at that time. Okay. Uh, again, it helps enormously that we have the AAA bond rating because people really want to be part of this. <coughs> okay. Um, well, why don't we do the uh, 20 minutes to do the call for Sure. Uh, or I was going to do the uh, North Hadley Village Hall RFP results. Mm -hmm. Sure. Is anyone else? Are you expecting anybody else for that? or No. So uh, we're reviewing and act on the results from the request for proposals for the sale of North Hadley Village Hall. Uh, we received a bid tabulation form in which we have two organizations, individuals, uh, bidding on North Hadley Village Hall with uh, Joel Greenbaum and Peter Hieronymus. Hieronymus? I'm sorry, thank you. <laughs> um, two prices, one for 105000 one for 70000 I don't know if you guys have gotten a chance to review them. Uh, 
one of them does call out the land and the other one did not call out the land next to it. So I don't know. That was my question, was uh, the one from Mr. Greenbaum uh, didn't, it appears it doesn't, or it is not contingent upon the land being removed from Article 97 protection, right? That's the way I read it. Way I, read it. Okay. I didn't see anything that said there was something about and that land. There's no mention at all. So. It, it, the only caveat I saw was buyer obtaining all necessary approvals and permits to use and renovate the property for a six unit residential non owner occupied purpose prior to closing. Proposed plan for the project are submitted with this proposal. So, you know, basically, he has to get all the permits, planning board approval before right. um, we will close on this. So, depending on their what they had to put in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to this process would dictate uh, where it would go. If I could speak to that? Yeah, go for it. Certainly, uh, line one of Mr. Greenbaum's proposal mm -hmm. uses the term whole parcel. The whole parcel, yep. Now, in the RFP, it's a little bit confusing on how it's written. It's written to sell map 6B, plot 29. And then it goes on to state 4,925 square feet and you have an attachment. So to me it seems like it's a little bit confusing as to it should have been written a portion of map 6B lot 29 as described in <coughs> attachment here too. So I'm a little bit curious as to that statement of whole parcel if that really means that he might be intending on trying to purchase the entire field. Yeah. Yeah, there's that and then the maps. And there's, there's one other bit of information I have about the playing field. Oh, go ahead. Saturday morning I heard back from council. Mm -hmm. I had asked the question if land under Article 97 can be sold to an individual. And the answer is yes. And it can stay under Article 97. The Article 97 tag just transfers in the city. So having asked the town to take the land out of 97, it doesn't come into play. We verified that at all with our, our council? Yeah, we'll have to do that. The attorney I used was Tom Reedy and Amherst. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Never heard of him. <laughs> um, okay. So that should help eliminate some hassles with the town meeting and, and taking it out of Article 97. So it how doesn't did, have to. Did Mr. Reedy say uh, what, if that part of the ball field that you were interested in using for uh, parking? Is, would that be allowable under? We our conversations didn't go that far, but this gets into how do you determine what's recreation? You know, some people could say driving to a vista and parking on the side of the road is recreation. So driving and parking in the field to go to see an art exhibit or listen to some music or a picnic on the lawn that could be recreation. So. You know, I, I didn't go into detail with this. I just wanted to find out the fair basics as to whether or not, and as I said in my proposal, if it could stay in 97, that would be fine. I don't want to develop the field. Actually, I would like to enhance it as a recreational place. I'd like to put in some outdoor barbecue, maybe even a you know, horseshoe pit, um, encourage the church to use it more still be available for the ice fishing and uh, derbies and all that kind of stuff. I had someone approach me about, um, I guess the orchard does, on the other side of the lake, does a hard cider thing in the fall. And the Sugar Shack is going to team up with that. I was asked if, you know, if I got this place, could the hall and the field be part of that and make it into a weekend thing for the community? It's like, absolutely. So. <coughs> You know, I'd like to see the field be used more than it's being used. Try to come up with ways to encourage that. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about the 
parking aspects of that? I, mean, I think there, there's been some concern about, um, you know, if it were to become some sort of a concert hall or a venue that might attract, I don't know, 50 people, 75 <coughs> people, whatever. What is that going to do? And they're going to have to park along the roadway. Well, I've been to concerts at the church. I went and saw Carr and Allison speak there, and that was packed. And we parked on the field. Um, and I don't foresee any kind of uh, of a uh, show going on in the Village Hall exceeding the amount of people that showed up for that. I mean, she is, you know, quite famous, and the place was packed. I, I didn't pay any attention to how many cars were there, but the field was full of cars. So. I don't see how it could exceed that. My, my vision for an inside the hall would be maybe 100 people. You know? So hopefully that would be 50 to 60 cars. And, and I imagine that would fit um, based on what I experienced with the church. So if it's determined by town council that land under Article 97, if we were to sell it to you under Article 97 and can keep that protection, could not be used for parking. You wouldn't be interested in that? No. Okay. It, it, it's still being used for parking right now. I mean, you know, just two weekends ago, I drive by to the job that I'm working on right now. I mean, the church was, was using it for parking. They had a little bit of a barbecue. And that, that's cool. I mean, I want to encourage the church to use this on a larger scale, and you know, and everybody else. And I like to see families going down there and having picnic lunches down there. Use the grills that we put up. So everything in Mr. Greenbaum's proposal is contingent on a lot of things. Correct? Am I reading the same thing you're reading? Yeah, basically a, a bank loan. Uh, bank loan, whole nine, nine, nine yards now. Your proposal is not contingent on anything. It is not. Well, it's contingent upon the what? Article 97. Article 97. Yeah. But if he's asking that it not be taken out of 97, which we would have to confer with the lawyer, then and I think it's going to have to be a separate thing anyway. I mean, we've known for a year now that that parcel really can't be sold. The way we understood it right now, it with can be the bill, I know. But but I asked a gentleman a couple of weeks ago if he understood he was only bidding on the building and the lot it was on, and he said twice yes. And now Mr. Greenbaum has got this whole parcel thing in. It, it seems like we we keep saying we're trying to only sell the building and the parcel of land right now. We can work the field in hopefully later. Uh, we don't know, and I can't. You can't make any promises to them, to either one of them, that the field's going to be sold to them if it's already in protection. You know. So for, I mean, the question <laughs> in my mind right now is, and maybe we have a cell phone for Mr. Greenbaum or something like that. But um, I guess the clarification I need is: is he assuming that the ball field is included? Because if he's not, and we don't need to sell it to the ball field, then his bid price is quite a bit more, even though it has more contingencies in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, on those maps, it does show the property line. Um, I have yeah, his number. As being I, it, sure. I was going to text the real estate agent, but yeah, if you, I can call him. <laughs> but I'll come and get it from you. Maybe he doesn't want his number <laughs> said out loud <laughs> on television. I just want to compare the same. Yeah, I mean, I guess the bigger question is, you know, if we have these two bids, these two possibilities, are we open to entertaining these offers right now, or absolutely are we going forward with our town? It's been way too long. Let's have? sell them, and that's it. Because that's the thing is, I don't know if we're quite in a position tonight to sure. accept an offer, but we have a town meeting article that we're sending to town meeting in two, two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. We don't really have a meeting between now and then. But at the same time, if uh, let's just say that um, one of these proposals was worth accepting, yeah, and allowed us to maintain town ownership and control of that piece of, piece of land. Mm -hmm. For now, that seems like a it's a separate issue. I, yeah. I really, I really think it is. And 
and then maybe down the line if we want to go that direction, you know. But um, I do think we should make a decision sooner rather than later, on it, especially if we can solve the problem without having to fight it out in town meeting for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think these are two decent proposals, yeah. you yeah. know, different, but both have merit. So, I, I yeah, with personally, the, I feel like they're worth entertaining. Got the, it, it got the gavel, Mr. Chairman? Personal, Sold. <laughs> yeah, a, a personal comment. Sure. Yeah, I, I, the building, it, it, you know, was built by someone in town and given to the town. And I think it carries a little bit more historical weight than some of the other buildings. The, my proposal is one that wants to encourage and keep the village hall being a part of the community. Mm -hmm. The other proposal is the doors will be shut and they stay shut. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's done. It's over. Here. So I'm trying to work a proposal here that enables this building to still be used for the tenant and by the tenant. Mm -hmm. <coughs> how, yeah. big, how big is the ball for half, half an acre? I think that the entire parcel is listed at 1.49 acres, and I'm not exactly sure how big the piece is that was drawn around the building. Yes, so. I didn't get that clarification that we're looking for, so it's yeah. hard to make it. I, at least in my opinion. I'd like to make a decision, but no, I don't no, think I we don't. can with without knowing for sure what we're comparing. I, I think we should check with our council, um, you know, verify if we can even sell the land under Article 97. That would be key. Um, you mean what Tom, verify Tom Reedus didn't? Verify that, that yeah, with our town council. Mm -hmm. um, and then also if, you know, we could also check then to see if we can use Article 97 land for parking officially or not. Um, and then evaluate the proposals because I mean, if you can't sell it, then that really eliminates the one. Right. Did Joel know that this was on the agenda today? I believe that he did, but I have not been in contact with him. I just, <coughs> I just sent him a text and we need to hear back from him. No, I meant like, before. Joel Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He was aware that we were talking yeah. about it. <laughs> well, yeah, he put the bit in. I hope yeah. he was aware. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm just Everybody was informed that you would be taking it at your next meeting. Yeah. I'm, I'm just surprised she's not here. He was another kind of... Well, I appreciate you showing up. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, John, you mentioned something uh, about dealing with just selling the building now and yeah. then dealing with the yield <laughs> aspect later. I Can you well, elaborate on that just, a little bit? Just because of the town meeting vote we got coming up with that article with the field again, so... Right. So until we we see it, it's worded a little different now at town meeting. So, you know, it, it may pass without a problem, and we could work it in into the deal or out of the deal or whatever. But I think people would like to know yeah. ahead of time, even before yeah. town meeting, that there's a proposal on the table to retain the ball field in some form or manner yeah. as an open space. Yeah. Um, which this gentleman has offered to do. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, everybody knows my feeling on the North Hadley Hall, yeah. and I've been saying it for 10 years, but no, this I, is probably the first proposal that um, is not really making me want to take a match. So um, <laughs> I can say it honestly. So, you know, I mean, it's... it's and technically, it's kind of a personal... Uh, Municipal partnership here, but you're going to own it all, and you're going to be responsible for it all. But it's right. it's going to be a community thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I get that. But. Exactly. So, is there a way that you could remove the contingency for the equipment garage to be placed on there, and then, in my mind, that that's taking a part of part of that Article 97 area. Um, right. And if it, because I'm looking at it, is if we could. Ex this is all theoretical here. Yeah. If we were to accept your offer, mm -hmm. subject subject to either the green space being sold under Article 97 protection and being used for parking, or town meeting voting to remove the Article 97 protection mm -hmm. and then sell the lot to you, um, 
I think we could sell that to the voters a lot better with the, with the idea that there would not be a structure placed on there. And you know, as part of the deal, you could say, hey, it'll be maintained as open space, and this is what our plans for the, for the, for the lot are. I don't know if there's anywhere else in the lot where you can store equipment and things right. like that. I don't know right. if you could jam it in somewhere else in the lot. I don't know. So well, I might be able to get the bomb wars and stuff inside the garage. Yeah. That would be fine with me. I I really have no problems with keeping this land under the Article ninety seven. Okay. So and I think and I'm hoping that at town meeting that will, you know, go over a lot better with the, the town residents so that they know that the vista is going to stay the same. It's available for these purposes. I'd also like to stress again that not only do I want to keep it open, I want to enhance it. Mm -hmm. uh, I want mm -hmm. grills out there. I want a horseshoe pit, maybe even a concrete chest table. So, you know, yeah. those kinds of things. So, let me ask the rest of the board then. If, is it your feelings that if you can keep it under Article 97 and sell it and use it for parking, that would be the preferred method is to keep the protection on land rather but than... But it's not going to be used for parking all the time. Right. No. That, that's what I'm I think that's the key, not use it for parking, right. but occasional. occasional parking as, it, as parking. it is now. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's no change of what is being done with it right now. Because to me, that would be a win-win because mm -hmm. it stays protected. The place gets used for its new purpose, and then we don't have to fight it out on town meeting floor. Exactly. Well, we really need to have, um, I would like to do a contingency type of thing with uh, town council, uh, getting, town council getting back to us ASAP yeah. if he agrees mm -hmm. with uh, Attorney Reddy's yeah, I mean, and determination. And they have to go to the AG's office or something to get higher than just town council to get approval to sell land with that protection as well. So. I got it. No process is there. It has to get picked up or not. No. So, so you said you are willing to strike the building from yes. the ball field? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'd like to make a motion that we accept uh, Mr. Hieronymus's offer striking the garage or equipment storage location um, contingent upon approval by town council or whatever state agency the approval needs to be that we sell both the building and the associated ball field maintaining the article 97 protections so long as they can be used for occasional parking to suit your purposes your intended purposes for the building. Okay, I, I'm going to second that but, um, for a question. Um, for David, so from a bidding and procurement standpoint, do we have any issue? I mean, obviously there's a price point difference, mm -hmm. but the proposals are very different proposals. Right. So does that get us out of any concern about the fact that we're not looking to the higher bid? So my understanding is that this is a contingency bid, uh, a contingency motion, and I think that should be one of the contingencies that. Uh, that, uh, that the differences in the non-price um, parts of the bid um, are equivalent or, or erase the, diff the price point here. Okay. So we don't want to get it overturned in the procurement process and yeah. have a... So would you like to uh, add a phony amendment there that will kind of encompass that Sure, so your, your motion and further subject to a legal opinion yeah. that we're not violating um, yeah. any Yeah, so we don't get any process. trouble with the other bidder. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, we don't want to put ourselves up for yeah. bidding. Yeah. Okay, any further discussion or? And in the best interest of Tom Hadley and its citizens, this should be the best offer. Maybe. I do you think it, it could be a win-win for everyone? Yeah. I think so. so. Yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really, it depends, it really on the, is. It depends on the lawyers. That's what really depends <laughs> on at this point. But yes, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sold. <laughs> All right. Finally. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Sorry. for your <laughs> Yeah. We're so excited about what it could do for the community. Thank, thank you, you, thank you for so much. submitting your proposal again after 
first round. Yeah. So let's and see what we can do here. And for showing up tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Good luck and yeah. good luck to all of us to get that opinion in here yeah. soon. Right. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Literally a white elephant. <laughs> Thank well, you. Welcome to Hadley. Yeah. Is anybody here regarding the Shala APR? You are. Okay, great. Let's take that on. Last week we were going to discuss this, but it is here, so we just want to what we're, what we're voting on and what we're looking at with it now. Okay. It before, so. Paulette Kustaba, Chair of the Conservation Commission. Um, right now, the Shala. Um, Kestrel Land Trust is holding the, they have bought the Shala Farm and they're holding it so that an APR would be coming down the road and then they, they would get reimbursed for the purchase. The, what's shown here on the map is the Dysix Farm or the Dysix property. They bought in fee some of the farm buildings from Kestrel and they wanted um, some farmland to go with it. So the agreement was that they would buy this in fee with the contingency that a conservation restriction at no cost would then be given to the um, Conservation Commission for the town so that this land would be preserved and it would be used in accordance with the the rest of the property. So they're getting the farmland and in turn giving the contribution. Giving the CR. Okay. Yeah. So that is the Dysic CR and then the Shala CR is once that is taken, once the CR is signed, it can go into, it could go to APR. So. Yep. I'm just trying to figure out exactly which. Yeah, we couldn't figure out what. Well, I think the yeah. confusing part was that involved, you had the Dysix yeah. name on the property. Mm -hmm. Well, and we were Dysix so have bought it the property in fee, and flat. the agreement was yeah. that but they, they bought were, it from Kessel. Kestrel. Kestrel. Yes. Okay. yes, they bought it from oh, Kestrel right with the contingency that the farmland would get a CR put on it at no cost to the town, okay. so that that land would be protected. Yeah. And it's 15 acres. Yes. Yep. The front land, which abuts the road further down, that says Dysic, that is um, contains buildings, so that would would not get a CR put on it. Okay. It's the 15 acres that gets the CR. So this is adjacent or, or behind this like Maple Maple Line. Uh, this is actually Pretty off the of Cummins Road. 82 okay. Cummins Road. Okay. Yeah, behind the store. Yes. Yeah. That's behind the. Behind the, store, Valley, isn't it? behind the store, yeah. Behind the store in that area. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Motion to Missing an action. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you for coming to the No problem. Be back again. That was really <laughs> easy. <laughs> tomorrow? Three nights in a row. Yeah. Really? Oh, well. <laughs> Where are you going tomorrow? Conservation restriction. Oh, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Cons come last night here and then that tomorrow. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> let's Thank you. move to the uh, Senior Center Fire Sorry. Substation and Library Building Projects update. Mm -hmm. And the senior center, or sorry, <laughs> library groundbreaking, groundbreaking today. today. So I don't know if you guys want to go first with any updates there. Um, sure. I mean that was kind of the next, um, next big thing, but um, that's that's done. We had a great turnout for it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of nice uh, speeches from folks at the Mass Library Building um, Commission, uh, Patrick. You know, trustees. So uh, right now there aren't any, you know, major obstacles <laughs> in front of us. So things are moving along. I think we're still hopeful that we can um, pick up some of the ground. Maybe we had about three week took about three weeks longer for the uh, the side of things. Um, mm -hmm. But hoping that in the grand scheme of this project, that that time can be made up and. You know, everything's going well with the architect. Um, the 
big push right now is trying to find a creative way to get, um, you know, we've been able to afford the solar panels, right, um, that you saw because of the way that the bids came out. But uh, there's a push now to see if we can do it on a volunteer basis. So we've had a couple of people step forward and actually offer up um, kind of like basically a thousand dollars worth of their own solar. Uh, and so you'll see that campaign kind of gearing up to see if there are other folks in Hadley who might be willing to do that. Is it necessary to be putting solar on top of that? When we're, our rates were tied into the town electric and discounts that we have, is it really necessary to be putting solar panels on it? I think it's not, it, it's not I'm just really purely concerned. a financial consideration. I think people recognize that through the aggregation program, uh, and we're actually, um, I think Alan Weinberg was going to be working with David to, to look at some of those numbers to see how it came up. I think it's more of a um, mission to try to promote solar energy in general. And it just seems to be a shame to spend that much money on a building and not be able to. Um, I think they wanted to basically say, like, this building powers itself yeah. was what big thing. And then was it tied into the LEED certification, too? Well, LEED certification, you get. Uh, a lot more credits credit, yeah. for having the panels on the building. So. Yeah. So, so the solar that you were talking about, the, the donation mm -hmm. for the volunteering, are they are basically is somebody coming forward and buying, say, one panel of the array, or are they mm -hmm. donating their ex excess solar capacity to the library? If they're actually putting the panels on the library, right? You're it's for physical panels. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, well, actually, you know more about this than I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the folks that yeah. want to talk to that. All, all I know is, well, we had committed a certain amount, I know, for the library. So when we went to give them like our yearly thing, mm -hmm. they said, well, why don't you apply to the solar panels instead of whatever the fund was for before mm -hmm. the Friends of the Library. So that's all I know about it. But, but it is to go toward the solar panels. They are looking for, I think, up to 100 donors, mm -hmm. somewhere in that range. Yeah, 100 to 150. I think it was 150, right? Maybe 150. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, in, corporate in, sponsors, anything. In what amount? Like a $1,000 income? In it or income. Whatever, yeah, yeah. I think that 1000 gets you one panel. Mm -hmm. But um, if you have $5, <laughs> they'll, they'll take it. <laughs> How many megawatts are there in the I was just talking to, we should have asked Claire when she was here. Yeah. But uh, Jack, I was talking to him today, and I think it was, it's, 30 kilowatts, I think, is what they're trying to get up to. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so. You'll, you'll be hearing more about that in terms of, and obviously, the, um, the fundraising in particular for the library, remember, was a big component. So um, the campaign target, I think, was 300,000 <coughs> now looking at for stuff. Yes. Um, fire substation. Pour and concrete um, yesterday or today um, for the uh, uh, back of the building, and then they're still working on the uh, uh, radiant heating. Radiant radiant heating. Radiant. They're still doing that. We have groundbreaking ceremony next Wednesday at 5:30. All are welcome. And I'm not sure, I'm sure all who my guests have invited yet, but we'll soon find out. And. Uh, Senior Center, I can kick it off. I think maybe there's some folks here that want to say some things too. I'd so. just like to explain a little bit about the yeah, uh, go ahead. changes. And one of them, the first one is the audiovisual, which we've been discussing right along. It's not a new thing for us. Wanting that every senior center that we visited had that, and it was very beneficial to them. So we're hoping, you know, keeping within our budget that you'll support that project. And the other one with the um, buff, you know, the wall, the retaining wall, it's probably not necessary, but was, what was explained to us was that it might prevent something in the problem in the future with erosion from the neighbor's uh, grass coming onto the parking lot. Yeah. Is that the question we had? Though? I can answer, I can clarify it too, because I, I was unclear last week about where it all was coming from. I was just getting off of a lot of stuff in my own life and just trying to figure it out. I hadn't been to a lot of meetings and since I've been explained to. So the audiovisual component, it's basically something that has been in the budget ever since the beginning. Yeah. In these types of projects, it's typical 
not to include that in the general contractor's scope. So it's showing up like a change order, but that's because it's something we have to send out to bid separate from the general contract bid. But it's always been in the budget. There's always been a line item where are we expecting this to come down the line? It's just something that needed to get bid out later on in the project so that's in order to get all that a contingency. It's not no, a contingency not because it's in the no. FF and E line. It's probably an option or something. Like it's not an no, 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 it's no, 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 it's, no, it's not an ad alternate. No. It's something that's in the budget, has been planned on, but is not part of the general contractor. Was never part of the general contractor's scope. Well, wait a minute. So if it's in the FF and E, so you're saying, all right. So you've got your general yeah. contractor's budget, which is basically your major construction that's all the concrete right. all the and then, structural all the siding you yeah, know all, all that the rugs, tangible yeah toilets stuff. yeah and then there's a big ff and e line which is variable because you can like make a furniture. decision yeah, yeah furniture fixtures and equipment so yeah. you're saying that in the original budget yes that this av equipment was always intended to be part yeah. of that, and we just need to go through a separate procurement process yes. to bid that out. So it's technically not It's not a not change. change order. No, it's not a change order, but the way it shows up, let's say, this, so this the, is our budget, right? Mm -hmm. Just the, the way it shows up on here. So we're not a- FF and E technology support. We have it a line item in here, $140,000 but we have to send that out to bid. It's not a change, it's a pending status, so. So all the budget numbers that you showed us, well, remember when we had the library came in and then the senior center building came yes. in? Yes, yeah. That's, was it's included in, the, in the bottom line. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So this is not above and beyond that. No, no, it, it there might be some been, contingency yeah. that goes in there, maybe the budget was off it a little bit, been but bid. it wasn't. It's not like it wasn't in there and this is a surprise yeah. thing. No, it could have been bid like an alternate if, if you wanted it to at the time, but we didn't think that they were going to have enough money originally, so then they... No, no, it. no. This was yeah. never to be bid. It's not like solar panels or something like that that's yeah. physically part of the building, something different. It's technology within the building. It's just like we wouldn't have the contractor. The it's still physically part of the building, but it's, it's audio-visual equipment, not... Not a wall or a toilet or something along those lines. How is procure, procurement going to work with this? It's well, a hundred thousand. Well, because it involves wiring, it uh, will have to be built uh, bid yeah. as, uh, as public yeah. works constru uh, public construction rather yeah. uh, under Mass General Law Chapter One Forty Nine. <coughs> will have to be prevailing wages. It will have to be the, the bid bond and all the, the usual notices. So you're saying that the GC would not be in charge of this, this would be separate construction within the... There'll be coordination. There'll be coordination. Because we'll be in, this contractor will be yeah. in the building running wires, like the electric yeah. Before they would slap be, up the walls. Yeah, yeah. but, but right. the general contractor would not be the, it would be the, I don't know, <laughs> again, yeah. now we're starting to get into too much detail where I'll that's, probably that's okay say something job. I regret, but yeah, it's the OPM's <laughs> job to, right. to coordinate that, but it's not under the general contractor's scope. So, so, you're, so, scope. so you're, you're just suggesting that this is something that has been planned all along. Yes. And that uh, you're just looking for permission to go out to bid. That's exactly it, yeah. yeah. Because you have the shell of the building. So under the construction part of it, when you're building a building and you're going to be putting these things in these rooms for visual things, for TVs, for whatever, needs to be built into the construction part of it as you're going along because you're not going to do it afterwards. Exactly. That's exactly so what I meant. So I get it out to bid. Right. right but I'm not sure why they didn't go out to bid to begin with. Why it wasn't in the GC scope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. a little earlier it's, than this. It's that. just yeah. that's kind of the standard practice with this. So when we're they sending it out to bid, we can be more specific about the, the technology you want. And it's up to date yeah. as opposed to last year's technology we're trying to put in and then resulting in. But the wiring and everything is the same. You've got to have wires behind the wall 
to hook up to any visual to where you're going to have yeah, it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't you know, know what I mean? Yeah, I'm just, I know what you mean. I'm yeah. just saying. I, All when I we, know when is we that built the school and we knew we needed, we're going to have something there for them to have. We had to put it into the contract and the scope of the work of, of getting that done as you're building out to end. Are they hanging drywall yet? There no, there's no drywall getting home now. But it's soon. It's soon. I mean, we yeah. we have to get this moving and get out well, to bits or try to do it. Question? Yeah, go ahead. So I mean, and believe me, I'm all for having. It makes no sense to build a building like that and not have AV equipment. Yeah. But my question is, in the FF and E line, mm -hmm. um, for the sake of argument, you know, you have. I don't know what the line was, so there was, you said that yeah, there's... 140 right now. FF&E slash technology, technology support. Yeah. Yeah. So you had $140,000 in the original budget for that. Yes. Is there any sort of change in the scope of the AV equipment in the bid that's going out now because there's more money available? Or are you sticking within the original... I heard you say something about not that there might not be some contingency use. <laughs> I think I think just maybe the cost was a little higher than originally estimated, you know, and that's why we're sending it out to bid. Because I know a hundred thousand dollars worth of audio visual equipment, low voltage wire is a ton of low voltage wiring and audio visual equipment. We're yeah, talking yeah, some yeah. high end or a lot of equipment. So that's the, that was my only concern. Was, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. What are, are we installing a yeah, what are we surround sound movie theater like at the mall? Or <laughs> I mean, it's a, a long list of things, and as I don't Each think the scope has changed. I mean, it's yeah. been that's this has been discussed in yeah, the senior item center item for a while. Um, well, I know. Um, so you're going to do it now if you're going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's just a ton of money for TVs and audio I know. It's crazy. So, but I mean, but it's a, but it's a seven million dollar project too. So I mean, this is the stuff that will make it, you know, that extra level. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I'll just say too, like this is thirty percent of our population is going is could possibly use this building, and. You know, we're putting the best foot forward with this facility, and it's going to be really nice at the end. And we do have the money in the budget; it is budgeted. There's no reason why we shouldn't make the nicest senior center we could. That was a key talking point. That part was that? That actually already in. It. What's that? That was already in the budget. That, that was, was in the budget. Yes, talking. in the budget. Yes, we didn't in have the budget. Time. Yes, that was yeah. one thing I was <laughs> uncertain on last week. Right. I came in not knowing that information. Yeah. So, but it's. Here it's so been here. So this, it, let's just say that the bid came in at exactly a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, we're saying that accepting that bid would not affect our contingency reserves whatsoever for the project because we already had this in the budget for hundred forty. I mean, it, it might affect. I, I don't know the exact breakdown of the total FF and E, and it might affect it. You know. A little way, one way or the other, but it it's within the range of contingency, and that being there. And everything else underground is done, so except for the paving. Yeah, well, which they're really trying. To what's push underground? <laughs> water. I mean, the, all the pipes are in, yes. and that kind of all thing. All the drainage yeah. is in. I mean, now. we still have to talk. You know. Did they run the lines for like your? Internet and things like that. Have those been run out there? Yeah, all the conduits. Are oh, the yeah. conduits yep. are in? Okay. Yep. So that's a plus. That's done. Yeah. Yeah, but it is. So for this item, mm -hmm. this audiovisual bit, this is something that is in the budget. In the budget, we just have to send it out to bid to actually get a number and then do the work. So. And, and you have back. enough money in the budget. Yes, we have. I mean, we have four hundred even. If this is goes forward at that price, we have four hundred sixty thousand dollars still in contingency. Mm -hmm. and, so, so it would and even if we approve years. every change order that's on the docket right now, that we, you know the OPM is still working out with this general contractor, we haven't voted on it. All those things that are just out there lingering, we still have four hundred sixty thousand, even if those are all approved. So. We're not well, close good. to okay. we're not close to the the contingency limit by any means. Mm -hmm. So my other question was: Was this original plan approved or created 
under the old size of the building, the larger size building, or the downsized building? I mean, this plan was created to suit the number of rooms. I I don't, I don't know think. how many rooms yeah. we've resized versus eliminated, yeah. but it's yeah, an original yeah, plan based on that. the number of rooms. We have the same it. amount of rooms, just smaller. Well, and the reason I ask is because, you know, when you use surround sound and things like that, the number of speakers and the, the square footage of or the, the linear feet Very of wires right. and things like that all play into the big part of it. And you don't put, like, you know, uh, 100 inch TV in a small room versus, you know, that one might yeah. be 70 inch TV. So, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. saying where they have the exact specs in exactly. here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that that was adjusted. And adjusted mm -hmm. um, because yeah. it won't be. I mean, this is. And a bid could cover from the last two. 10 4 of 19. Yeah. So, I'm under the assumption they've updated it all for the current mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, I'll so. say, <coughs> you know, with the presumption that this has been appropriately sized for the construction that's underway um, <coughs> to approve the going out to bid on this AV package. Okay. I can second. Oh, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll second. Yeah, second. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Yeah. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then the so, so uh, just want to say that, you know, meeting on Friday with our OPM and architect to discuss E&O related issues, structural issues, what have you, we've been having with the building um, and with the design. I, you know, invite anyone on the select board that wants to come to that meeting to be there 9 a.m. I'd like to keep it below a quorum so we can have a meeting, but anybody else would like to come, um, you know, I would like to have you there. Uh, but one thing that is just critical right now is this wall on the south side of the property. The retaining wall? The retaining wall. Um, it is something that is potentially, uh, could cause a delay. If we don't address this now, basically this week, it could cause a delay in the paving of the site. Um, and then the paving wouldn't happen this year, it would happen next year. So what's the price on that one? That one is the $22,000 retaining wall change. And that that's re running behind the houses? It's behind the houses. Here, I took a picture oh. today. I can show you. That's kind of where it is. That's like co the yeah. coach's yeah. barn or whatever. Um, so the wall would go along there and then this is something that came up in the, you know, in the grading of the site. It's, it's, uh, it's got to get done. It's got to get done. It's something that we encountered on the site that was, was unexpected. The retaining wall had to go up in height, which then caused us, because it went up in height, to have a fence on top of the wall. Um, I think it's aesthetically it will look better. Than, than not to. And, and the only other thing too is we, we're going to have to address this one way or another um, it, because of that slope, the weather, all these things. It would be good to just get it done and work it out later, but it, I, I'm at for our cost. doing this. If the but elevations still, were wrong, did have you contact the council or not? We asked two last. I, I, I would say let's not threaten council yet. Let's have no, a discussion. No, we need an opinion with, from council. Yeah, we. This we happens can to do the that. town of Hadley and the tax, lawyers, but then we're going to delay the project. This happens to the town of Hadley and the taxpayers trouble. all the time, and we end up paying for it, and it's wrong. But we can address that before the final bill is paid. Exactly. This is to approve the work proceeding forward. I mean, I'm not in forward with all these work changes either. Yeah. I can tell you that much. But with winter coming upon us and wanting to have some paving done up there, this is the time to get it done. I don't think um, that wall, honestly, is going to affect the paving. The concrete's already in. All the catch basins are in. All the drainage are in. I stopped at the site. I talked to the contractor. I mean, the contractor told me today that if we don't get this addressed this week, we set the paving back, we could delay the opening of the building. So that's, I'm just relaying what the contract relayed to me. 
What time uh, is that meeting yeah, Friday? Today meeting today. 9 a.m. 9? <laughs> hey, boss, I'm going to take a couple personal <laughs> hours off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you think you can I, I get more I, money I wanna, and squeeze more money out of it, then I won't need to come. I want to get it straight. It's not until the 2nd? 4th. So that's the walkthrough of the town. Yeah, but, but if we, if we had to yeah, vote on we something could vote like on this, something. Yeah, yeah. we've done yeah. that before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we could vote on something like this after, you know, at that point. But I think that's because that just pushes us back. It's you know a week and a half away, so it just pushes us back. The the issue I have is well, two things: the constant narrative from the contractor saying this has to be done, it's going to delay the project, it's going to shut down work. Is it's just it's not true. The contractor's full of it. That's not the case. That's not how these things work. Some areas of a project can be on hold, what other areas are continuing on. So, uh, again, I think we're being held hostage here. I mean, forced to pay these bills yep. rather than sort it out ahead of time. Um, I don't want this. I don't want to see the project delayed either. But the fact is, if there was a mistake on the part of the surveyor, the architect, whoever, they need to be held accountable because it's going to be easier to do it. In, in advance than it is going to be go after them after the fact. Yeah, because the only the only recourse we would have, I would imagine, is that you basically get to the end of the project. You've the got final payment, right? Yeah. Right, and then you and hold back final payment. And, and we did that. Court. We and did that on Lorena Lane too. We held some money back from the contractors uh, for the work done there and the damage that was done there. I remember. You know, it. it, it I understand that, but the point of the the matter is. All these adjustments are because, not because of the town of Hadley and the taxpayers. It was either the surveyor, the engineer, or the OPM. Somebody o was an oversight on one of those three, not the town of Hadley and Did the taxpayers. Did the contractor address that, Christian, when, when you were talking, when, when he was saying <coughs> that, you know, hey, we're, you know, we're going to be delayed, but did, did he acknowledge that the reason that this wall is coming into play at all, the fencing on top, is because of the bad... No, I mean, or is he I haven't heard that from anyone that the site survey is is botched or anything along those lines. Everybody says that they're <coughs> just site conditions that were encountered that were different from the design. I don't think anybody is going to say that right now. Um, you know, you're not going to get anybody admitting to something like that on a site um, because we've talked about lawyers. You know, we've talked about all these things, you know, so, you know, it just gets to be a sticky situation. I think on Friday, we need to have a discussion and see what we can come to on reasonable terms to work these things out. I think trying to get lawyers involved, threatening each other, it, it's going to end up hurting the project and hurting us. And we're going to pay more in the long run trying to fight a legal battle. I, I I don't think this is outlandish in the scope of the whole project to keep moving it forward. Well, I can tell you in the public records uh, project update paper that's sent out mm -hmm. from the project, one of the statements in there was the site was a foot lower than projected mm -hmm. or than surveyed. Yeah. So right there, they admit and right here to change one hundred percent wrong. Yeah. Right there. Right here, the change order from Crestview says uh, the, uh, relocate the wall because the original drawings do not work with the on-site conditions, which to me tells me it's the elevations. And they put right in their project update from the OPM that the site was surveyed a foot lower than it actually is, or a foot higher than it actually is. Yeah, so I mean, I mean I, do, I'm we, not... do you have that right here, that, that document? <coughs> I think it was emailed. Was Give me a minute and I'll find it. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and I'm not suggesting that we, you know, call lawyers and, and threaten or anything like that. I, no, I think we it's just a matter. Right? Just a matter of having an honest business. That, again, it's just business. Yeah. yeah. Um, and having that discussion on Friday, but not, but not being so readily willing to take what the contractor says because. And, and I'm, I mean, yeah. the, the, this isn't just taking what the contractor said, too. I mean, the OPM has no. been, uh, has vetted this, you know. I mean, the OPM does do a lot of pushback when the contractor comes to us with changes. Mm -hmm. A lot of changes we don't see because the OPM 
pushes back. So the OPM is protecting our interest. I don't think we should, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they get no benefit from putting these change orders out to us. So in any case, they would benefit on not having any change orders and having the whole project go smoothly. Yeah, of course. Um, but things come up. So, um, you know, the, the beam supports, if we didn't pay for them, I don't have a problem with that, but the, but this parking lot issue is a separate deal. Well, and there's other issues too. There's the yeah. trusses, it's this, yeah. it's the LVL sagging, it's the gable wall, all that needs to be addressed. But uh, meeting minutes from Hadley Senior Center meeting on October 9th on, uh, let's see, page two and three. Uh, I guess this was an update. Uh, I guess this was from the second. I guess this is the log of what the, yeah, uh, the yeah. LPM logs. Mm -hmm. Um, says the elevation north of the building is one foot higher than surveyed. EDM to review possibly adding retaining wall at the location between the sidewalk and the abutters property. EDM to provide a sketch. 10-9. EDM still reviewing and will issue a PR. But that's um, the north side. Yeah. So this is, and this is the south side is what we're talking about with this retaining wall. And the engineers went out there this last weekend to resurvey the property on the north side. Okay. Because so of this issue. And but if the I whole did site is off, then how is how is one side affected and the other side not affected by the site? But that said, the north side. I'm just trying to go back. Oh, that's the weekly code report. Um, so the north side would be between there and the coolest. Or? Yes. Yeah. But the site's level. The site's flat. Correction. It's been it was leveled before the construction started for the parking yeah. lot in the building. Not yeah, really yeah, yeah. at all. I mean, the well, site it all is sort of slow. Catch basins, so mm -hmm. I mean, oh, they're all in. right, but yeah. But they they got another problem with the sidewalk too. The sidewalk supposedly is pitching into the slab now. That's yeah, that, that's another issue. Oh, yeah, see, that's not what we're talking that about. That has nothing here. to do with the elevation, right? But the that, whole property. That, I don't know. I don't know. Out. I'm just saying that's in a different part of the property. Uh, does anybody know how long it takes? Did they say how long it takes to build this retaining wall? What a week, I would imagine, for a wall like that for the, the contractor getting in. I, I don't know exactly how long it would take. It, it, it's not a lot of money, but it, it's not something the taxpayer should be paying for. How, how long is the wall? Does it say? I think it's like 150 or 300. You know, it's it's long. I mean, it's, it goes the whole 140 length feet. of those houses. 140 yeah. feet. Yeah, I was going to say 150 feet. That's what the fence companies Chris, mm -hmm. estimated. For construction projects, what do you think for building a 140 foot retaining wall that's what, four feet high, something like that? Was yeah, four feet. feet. Four foot, yeah, yeah for the contractor, it could be done in a week. It's uh, just that uh, the retaining wall load is uh, will make it uh, take longer because by the nature of the retaining wall is to there's going to be a lot of load is to retain right uh, so by the, so that will make it uh, more um, take longer because of the load plus this time of the year because of the angle of the sun uh, if he's going to use a quick curing cement and uh, concrete that will also add to the money to as opposed to the regular um, yeah, because of the uh, weather changes. And it looks yeah. more like a decorative wall that they're putting up there anyway, if you've seen the, yeah. the it's, blocks. It's that were like there. a, a nice-looking yeah. yeah. cinder block, for yeah. lack of a better word, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it's description. So, but, but in terms of the, the speed, uh, the contractor has major equipment, major, um, equipment to handle it. It will be faster. But that is also turned us to be, in terms of dollar amount, uh, if it's faster, dollar is right. higher. Be slow, the delay is slower. But, but a week is reasonable, you think? For yes, I okay. think yes. And you know, they're they're and not uh, really uh, weather uh, dependent. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, and I was going to say that's yeah. you know mobilization time yeah. and those kind of things. I don't know if the contractor that does these walls is on site or if there's a new one. I guess it's Crestview there. Uh, yeah, most of the time, there are estimates right here. It's eleven thousand dollars for to build a wall. And it's an eight eighty nine ninety for the fence that goes on top of them. Yeah, yeah. A safety fence is what it is because it's it's four feet. Yeah, and, and sure you can't so not put a safety yeah. fence up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not arguing the fact that it's needed. Yeah, I'm, it obviously is needed because that's what the site ended up indicating. Yeah. The issue is, if we say yes now, we don't have this conversation with the contractors on Friday first. Yeah. I just feel it puts us in a bad, bad situation. 
Wait, you completely lose your bargaining. Yeah. Really? I mean, we've already approved thirty, forty thousand dollars in previous changes that I would say can be attributed to mistakes or miscalculations on the various contractors' parts. So now we're going to add another twenty of that, and we're going to be we're going to be chasing them to the end of the project. So if, you know, you can't you can't blame the contractor for all these problems either. It's not the contractor that created these problems. It, it's right back. It's not us that created these problems. It's, it's not, not the contractor that created these problems. We still need to do problems. something, whether or not they pay for it or we pay for it. That wall's got to go up. Right. So my yeah. question so is, so that's if, the bottom line. If um, period. If Christian goes ahead with the meeting on Friday at nine o'clock with anybody else that wants to be there, and they hash everything out there one way or the other, um, and then we we could go ahead and approve it on Thursday night mm -hmm. before it would. Is that okay, timing wise? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they they were looking for it this week. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, they can be a they can be a voice vote. I would if 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 Thursday is going to be too late. My thinking is the board can meet on the vote uh, the delegate authority. Yeah, on the voice vote and then confirm that on Thursday. But at least the voice vote will give. Yeah, I mean, let Christian make, make that decision on yeah. Friday <laughs> after the meeting. Yeah. So you get yelled at yeah, yeah. That's why I need somebody else there. So I'm not the only one up here. Does anybody else plan on going, or do you guys want me to go? I'm trying to go. But. I, I can't. I've got, a, I've got a conflict at work, so I already said yeah. I can't go. Uh, I, I don't. I don't have any problem going. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it would help to have another I, I voice there, there and I try sat to there a couple reasonable. times yeah. and and talked to Flourish and talked to yeah. Westview and yeah, you know, I kind of understand a little bit what's going on over there, and we had. Run into the trouble with the sewer with the elevation, mm -hmm. as DPW director well knows. We ran into trouble with the water, as I stated last week. Mm -hmm. So this this is not a new thing. The elevation problem goes throughout the whole job. Well, it'd be great to have you there, John, and then we can figure out if that is the <laughs> issue, and that's a that you have the knowledge of the sewer and the water would help our argument. So. I say we take, and we all know it's got to get done. Right. And we're all not happy with how it's come about, for sure. Yeah. Because we don't like to have to pay extra for things that really shouldn't be our responsibility. Mm -hmm. I would like to make a motion that we uh, approve this 22000 after, in, con in uh, contingent, um, John's and Christian's meeting on, on Friday. Friday. If you feel at that point that things are copacetic, then we need to move ahead with this and just get that wall up. If you look at the wall, the pictures it's taken, something's got to go there anyway. Yeah. So um, that's yeah, and the, the worst part is right behind um, coaches. Coaches, coaches yeah. burn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I had somebody tell me today to that the there was sewer pipes and all that stuff running out to his barn a long time ago. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, the sewer, the sewer lines do come out the back of all those houses yeah, also, do. and that's something else that we're going to, DBW is going to have to address. So when they we all go had through, septic tanks. Yeah, no, but I know, but when we go through sleeve lining, we may want to take into consideration that there's a brand new parking lot there. Maybe we ought to sleeve line that section from uh, the Legion parking lot out to Middle Street, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a, there's a main line that runs. The main line runs right through the parking lot there. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, that's that just another, that's thing. just like an over, so that's another right. oversight that that's we right. had, but yeah. it, it's in good condition right now because that line was TV, but yeah. it's something to, to think about in the future. Yeah. You know? All right, I'll, I'll second Joyce's motion. And we just put the new water line through, so yeah. uh, all the utilities will be brand new at that point. But uh, I just want to know <laughs> what's our target or what's our, you know, I'd like some shared it's, it's a little vague. It's a little vague. This motion, and I'm happy to take it on. I just don't want then to cause rifts because I move forward with something and we don't get what we we'll meet expectations. No, so we'll, I just we'll want, delegate the I, 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 I yeah. want to. We do all the best know. For the we all know. We all agree. It's yeah. got to get done. But we want to have them explain themselves to you and John mm -hmm. Friday, and after the explanation is done, then we can move ahead with that uh, motion we've all agreed to pay it I guess at some point but we want to have something yeah. concrete from them about what happened so 
in my mind, the, the resolution here that would be the best for the taxpayers is to have, whether it's through E&O insurance or whether they just want to cover the cost without making a claim so it doesn't ding their insurance record, however they want to handle it, would be for them to pay for the cost of the, the wall and the fence yeah. and also for the LVL reinforcements of those couple columns and concrete work as well as the gable and wall reinforcements from the, archi or the architect or the engineer that were load bearing miscalculations. As far as the roof trusses and the stuff like that that we approved a long time ago, it's that's water under the bridge as far as I'm concerned because yeah. we can't go, uh, well we can, but in my mind, let's deal with the stuff that's happening now instead of going back in time six months. Um, so if they want to cover that forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 worth of changes due to various mistakes, that would satisfy me at least, that they were covering their end of the party. Yeah, I just don't know if we're going to get there. I think... I don't know. I I think there's going to be a, I think, and not to give it all away, but I feel like it's going to come down to some kind of 50-50 split. A absolutely. Um, okay. and it, 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 it's going to be something along those lines where we, we give, yeah. we, they give something and yeah. we give something. Otherwise, it's going to come down to that. Well, what would have been in the design anyway? What was really neat? It comes and, down to and really. And we're doing that because yeah. if we included all of their mistakes with the trusses, with the water and sewer line elevations, with all the other sidewalk elevations, on and on and on, we'd probably be talking about $100,000 and $150,000 in various changes due to mistakes by the surveyors. Yeah, I, I guess right now what we're claiming is ENO is. Uh, we've approved, I guess, fourteen thousand dollars worth, and according to this, pending is sixty-three thousand. But I don't want you to jump on that because I don't know what's all included in pending and what we're pushing back on right now. So, so the, but, but the change orders. That's what you're saying. We've approved is seventy. Fourteen. We've approved. Fourteen four. And then we have sixty something pending. But I don't know what that means. I don't want to just. That's a big number, and we're talking about twenty-two. 22 of it for yeah, twenty. So I don't know what's what's here that's that's pending um, as far as a number goes. Well, you and John will figure it out. Yeah, by Friday. Yeah, we we'll sit down, and talk to them on Friday, and, and see where we're at. Yeah, and see if they'll do half or shared, whatever, and go from there. Mm -hmm. Get it done. Okay. Enough. You know, and we and don't want any more. No, <laughs> and the old PM is supposed to be watching out for the town. So I, I really want them to listen to this because, yeah. in my opinion, the taxpayers are, are, are paying for all these mistakes. I mean, and and I want we, that old PM to I, understand I just want to that. defend the OPM and say he is pushing back on a lot, too. Yeah. There is a lot of pushback. So it's this is what's bubbling to the surface and that we have to prove when we see it here. There's a lot, you know, underwater, so to speak, that... Yeah is getting discussed and pushed back on and all those things it's not like he's just passing them right through to us yeah. so this is the type of thing that rises to the surface mm -hmm. and we have to make a decision on it so and then they're well aware of our feelings so take a look yeah so all those in favor aye. Aye. aye aye all right thank you anything else i think that's it for right now did you do substation i did oh, yeah. yes i did Okay. Thank you. No. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, All right. How about we go to Culverts? Yes. <coughs> Thank you for staying late. Perfect for conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am. The, the discussion tonight is going to take us a couple of months. I just come in before the board for the board to begin to uh, think of various ways. Mr. Chairman, if you recall, when the board authorized us to begin the ditch cleaning maintenance program, so we had to look at the waterways and the drainage system. And in the course of that process, uh, I found that most of our culverts uh, uh, were very dying shape, especially covers that are carrying major loads. That means main, main major uh, roadway, roadways over them. And um, in the course of our seeking for permit from conservation to, to also clean these ditches, we also come to find that uh, 
the coverts were, for lack of a better word, were in the way. And so I had to talk to engineers for us to do some studies so I'd be able to come before the board to, be, because it falls into my, some of my goals that I plan to, I said I'll be talking to the board on infrastructure. Uh, we found that because of, uh, for years, maintenance has not taken place. For years, uh, assessment has not been done. And so we found that these things, in my view, has not come before the board in an official capacity. So, so I put in, so we had to do some assessment. And in the course of the assessment, I also wanted to narrow it down to critical and poor coverts. Covers that we require urgency, uh, and so as soon as we finish the report with the engineers, uh, the same engineers that we were with us that went through um, the process of the ditch that we submitted to Comcom, uh, so we narrowed it down to the report that I submitted to the board. Over 26 covers were inspected, and um, many of them are in high, medium deficiency situations and uh, categorized as critical or poor and needed some major attention. Now, the reason why I said that the board doesn't have to, uh, the board tonight, the board just have to take my report and advise me. I want the board to, because I, I plan to come back to the board, uh, the only important thing I want the board to begin to think about, Mr. Chairman, is to see if it's feasible, somewhere within now, and hopefully the anatomy, I, I will. Rec I will recommend to the board to establish an infrastructure capital account, whereby for some, whatever amount the board decides annually, can put into that account to that fund, and that fund will be very helpful to public works, in the sense that when we have like these coverts and the roads, even the drainage that we have, we've, we've started cleaning right now, the acrylic drainage, we still have to come back to go through them again. Um, many of the coverts we inspected, Mr. Chairman, the bottom has already rotted out. 85% of them were all out. The few that we still have bottoms we had, we have box coverts with concrete. But even then, the load that they are carrying right now, is, it wasn't designed for that load because of high volume of traffic today. And so we saw the issue with Modi Bridge, the issue with uh, Mill Valley. Uh, that was, uh, we're very grateful that no, no life or property was damaged when it collapsed. We were able to get hold of um, Mill Valley on time as soon as we notice the erosion. And um, so, so, so that that's, and then I also told the engineers that in those critical, poor and critical coverts, I would like to get some design estimation prices just for the board, for, for the board to take a look at. <coughs> it, the numbers are not necessarily the numbers that it will be for any of them as we go along, but for the purposes of today, we don't have enough funds to even begin to take care, take care of one or two cupboards. The town administrator and I, we, we applied for Max Works funds recently, but our thinking was for West Street as part of the, the assessment and the report that we given to the board in a few months concerning the, the, the comments. So, we also uh, believe that even if the state gives us that money, um, when it comes to coverts and other, 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 and other infrastructures, we don't have much grant in the state that will help us. Chapter 90 has been useful, but because of where we are today, the number we get from Chapter 90 is not able to help us. Now, I'm sure many have come before the board because many residents have come before me uh, and vented. Uh, they are complaining about sidewalks. Many are complaining about uh, school zone issues. Again, I always tell them that 
the best thing for them to do is to put a, a petition before the board that I don't have the authority to create a sidewalk. I prefer to do that, but we don't have the funding. Mm -hmm. But if, if the board can create a capital account or infrastructure account, uh, whereby I can make my case maybe every year, every two years to the board, say, okay, out of this fund, give us some money to add to whatever fund we have, we might be able to begin to um, deal with these issues. So, based on this report, Mr. Chairman, the the our infrastructures are in a very, very critical. They need some attention. Very, and the way we are structured as a town, these are also our waterways, our drainage ways. So all the water and all the surface water and everything goes through them. Now, with the new stormwater regulations. At the MS4, which I'm very grateful, the board has funded us very well. It requires a lot of things that will impact on these waterways also. So that's why I chose the chairman to be coming tonight to begin to talk to the board to begin to take a look at these uh, issues. They are, they are not uh, issues I expect the board to solve overnight, but yeah. they are issues that I think the board should take a look at. I, I have two comments for you. One is, yes. I was at a meeting. Was that? Two weeks ago, we were there. Uh, two, UMass, two, Saturdays. two Saturdays ago, and culverts are on the state's radar. Yes, um, and they're. I I would expect something to come out in the next several months, maybe for culvert repair. I don't know for sure, but just thinking that it's on the state's radar, they're, they're thinking about this. So maybe maybe there will be some funding out there in the future. I don't know if you have any comments or have heard any, anything. About yeah, that I mean, the, 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 there are grant programs out there right now, but they're woefully Under underfunded yeah. for the state's needs. And um, I think that uh, as time goes on, the state is recognizing that they've got to put a lot of money into this critical piece of infrastructure. Yeah, I think this is a great report to show to our legislators when we meet with them. Is it next Monday we're next meeting Monday. with them? So this is a great report to take to them, I think, for sure. Yes. Um, and number two is, as far as our capital planning goes, it seems like the, the dedicated accounts for projects or certain areas, it seems like that's not necessarily the way we want to go in when we're thinking about capital planning. Okay. But let's think about it like the police cruisers where we, they, a lot of our police cruisers were in disrepair and we gradually built up that fleet over time by kind of planning it out. Yeah. And can we do anything with these where we put together blocks of them over the next five years that we contribute money to and put into the capital plan and we're able to ramp it up? So in effect, you have your account, yes. but it's just looked at slightly differently when we're coming to borrowing in the capital planning process. Yeah, well, but I think the magnitude of the dollars that yes. we're looking at here, I mean, it was one and a half million. Great, yes. that's the whole nut. Yes. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, we would fund a police cruiser for twenty nine grand out of interest on stabilization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're yeah, but yeah. No, it is a different thing, but if we could put that plan together. Yeah, but your yeah. total's a hundred and hundred and fifty thousand anyway. So this is just like what I was saying right along the a while ago. You know, you need X amount of dollars for water infrastructure. You need X amount of dollars for sewer lining or sewer infrastructure. You need X amount of dollars for culverts. This yeah. should all be in the capital plan. This shouldn't come out of rates. This shouldn't come out of tax. Well, it'll, it's all going to come it's out of taxation. Yeah. But it, it, it should come out of capital. It's an improvement for the whole town. It's not mm -hmm. an improvement. Mm -hmm. Like the police oh, cruiser, I just, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I got one question for you, Chris, on sure. um, number 15, the uh, culvert under Route 9. Yes. Would that be a town responsibility or is that part of the state since it's under a state highway? It is, um, the, the state, most of the time, when it comes to culvert, the, it's a local problem. If it were to be bridge, which is also, it does the work of a bridge, right. but because of the legal terms, if it were to be bridge, the state will likely take a look. And it, the, and then we can also ask them to put it on a program, like a TIP program. But because they covered, now they will do the inspection for us. They will give us a report because it's right. on, on that um, state road. But it's, they will not, it's not their 
job to fix it. it it's a local uh, issue. Mm -hmm. and, and if you look at the one you're talking about, it's a, a very high travel road. And that's under the section they're going to be reconstructing in 2023, right? Yes. Which one? And so, and so in, the case of, in the case of that, Mr. Chairman, it would be a good idea that the town piggyback with the state as they will be opening the road. It's an opportunity for us to make a decision on the culverts. Just like we are discussing with them right now on sewer and water line. Because so that we are trying to pick, piggyback with the state as they'll be opening the road yeah. so we can in, improve our water line and our sewer line. Yeah. Now, that portion is the town responsibility. But because it's, it's cheaper for us now that they have their contractor, they, 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 they open the ground, we put our pipes. Yeah. So we're communicating with them. So, so the same thing in the case of culverts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Get a program going. Yeah, I would say let's, you know, work on putting a proposal together for how we can, you know, I, I don't think we're going to be able to do this all at once. No, 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 no that's why I'm, that's why I forgot that the board should begin the process together. of, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. of how we can do this yes. and incorporate this yes. into capital. Yes. Um, and I guess just with what John was saying is, you know, a lot of this stuff, we don't necessarily have the money to make accounts and build up time you know we'd be borrowing to do this mm -hmm. project so that would either be debt exclusion or have to go within the levy somehow so it would just depend on the capital needs of the town that year how we yes. would approach it so would it be possible as uh and not to decide tonight but just something to think about is, yeah you know we have the free cash policy that we maintain a balance of 75 ish mm -hmm. thousand mm -hmm. if we were to revise that policy and we'll say we make it uh, 95,000, something like that. And that whenever we are able to meet that goal that we set aside $20,000 a year for, because we don't contribute any roads money really. We just rely yeah. on chapter 90 money to yeah. paving and things like that. Yeah. Is, yeah, that, is that a acceptable use of, of money to do that as far as infrastructure goes? I, I don't know. I, mean, I, just, I mean, we could ways do it, but it would be like robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know, we'd be, I don't know, we'd be, we'd be taking but if the you money take, out If one you year. take a look at the yeah, no, culvert list, yeah. cool. um, there's some, there's yeah. some on there that we could be doing that are under critical yeah. uh, areas that aren't going to, you have to now start chipping away at it. Right. You can't not avoid it you have to do something and there are some that we can certainly start to afford on the smaller end of it that are still on the critical side of it right so i think we should start with the critical ones <coughs> that are going to be thirty two thousand dollars and work our way or twenty six thousand you know and not try to hit those that are still under critical but get them done yeah especially mm -hmm. if you're under a road that's going to be paved in the near exactly. future Correct. or something like that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the other thing mr chairman in the case of this COVID, if if we have some local funds, uh, we we have we know a road is going to be paved. Is that uh, that's an opportunity for us to take care of the culverts before that the road is paved, so that uh, we it, can it, Chapter Ninety be used for those culverts if we're paving over the roads or not? It could be used, but we don't have enough fund. I was going to say yeah. If we look at the money from Chapter Ninety, if if the board decide that we should to take care of a culvert or two. It will meet uh, even to, even right now. It doesn't meet enough to meet our roads. You saw what we did, Mr. Chairman. Most of the things we're doing right now is even with the chapter 90, Mr. Chairman, it, we are postponing issues. For example, yeah. uh, because the money is not enough, we 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 kind of break it up into pieces here and there, and then each road is too high. Because of every year we have to put another pint cake overlay. Yeah. So we don't have money to do uh, road milling or road uh, reclam reclamation Reclam before we put the mix. So we have so we have many homeowners right now. What we're doing in DPW, which is not chapter 90 money, is the fund that uh, budget funds. We are going back to fixing people's aprons because now we are the road is so high and April, and so public water is coming to post here. So, and that is because of years of asphalt overlay. That's why I say like in the state highways, the state always first of all have to take care, because we just finished one now, the South Maple from 
Bayro to Body Bridge. We've been there all day the, um, since we, and we're going to be there next week. But feeling it is high. We also have a, a resident that has a, a part of his properties are bought in South Maple over 500 feet. I'm still going to bring a contractor to put a, a, a berm because the water is going to his here because of the height. Yep. So these are the type of things that happens when we don't have enough funds. So we there was already yes. an eight inch berm there correct. and we paid yeah. the full eight inches and yes. now it's, 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 it's leaching it's out correct. on his property. Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we didn't know the right And I keep going back to and yeah. I'm listening to what, what David's asking. You yes. know, I Many times that's what they do, Mr. Chairman. They put some money away because we need that to come in too. See, and we missed all those grant programs too because they had Roads 101, they had Roads 102, they were complete street pro programs, and, and we never got on a bus and got any of no, that. No, complete street program, Mr. Chairman, if we want to do that, it would help us in the in a place like the, the, the um, for lack of a better word, the green, uh, the, the commons. Because complete street program requires for us to have a, a, a local resolution, and then you also have to have uh, the the state will give us fifty thousand dollars to do some engineering, mass DOT. But you have to have the the thinking is the road uh, the road you have to be open for all kind of road users. So it means sidewalk, bicycle bicycle lane, uh, walking path, and also if it's in a business district, we also have to accommodate uh, open space where chairs and benches. So, that, so that's, how, that's a complicity program. Now, most of our roads today, for us to meet that requirement, we require the board to put in a lot of money to complete. For example, a road like uh, South Maple, it would require the board to complete the whole stretch of the road. And also the board may be required to to eminent domain or to take some land because we need to put in sidewalk. At South so, Maple Street? You no, know, if if we choose oh if we choose that we so that's why the common the common is better for us to do that kind of thing. No. They're saying with that program. Yeah. 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 No, this no. this is yeah. this is what's Com involved for in a complete oh, yeah. 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 They, they, the common is in a is a better place for us to that we have a sidewalk right now there. We have we can do a lot of things there. And it's part of the things that when the the the, the study that um Put it together that we discussed last time, the chairman. When the next and CPA would be a good place for us to begin with that process. Mm -hmm. But but it, but right now the regular routes, just to keep up with our regular routes, the traffic is high. Uh, Rocky Hill Road is a major. We we can't even afford to do much. We're doing piece by piece because of the little um, money we have. Yeah. And so sometimes it looks as if we are doing nothing because the, it's a Piecemeal. So that's why I, I think that uh, this discussion with the chairman would be a good one that the board would take a look on a long term basis. Why isn't Wait. the state doing the Narwhal Rail Trail? Why aren't they doing those? Yeah. That, uh, this yeah. 303 over here by Pine 40, Hill, that's the state. How about 47? 47. You can offload to the state. Mm -hmm. We've been, the, the state's <laughs> been getting a lot better than it used to be. Yeah. Sure. I mean, These all seem to be owned by them. But as um, far as this issue, oh, go ahead, David. No, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, go ahead. All right, so from a budget point of view, uh, we've spent many years from about FY 2012 to the present bringing the town up in terms of its operational uh, budgets and its and services. So we injected a million dollars into the school system over a three-year period. We got aggressive with our OPEB. Uh, we improved uh, and, uh, and increased our public safety uh, game. We're working on upgrading public works right now. Uh, education is coming up the next uh, year, and then public safety again, then the human services, culture, and recreation. By 2025, the town should have taken a big step up in terms of all of its functions, in terms of its operations. At that point, you may want to think about uh, not increasing 
services or functions, but start focusing in on capital and have a long-term strategy for uh, really augmenting the special capital stabilization accounts that we've been talking about. So can, know, yeah, I think it needs to be talked about. That, because that's, that's sort of where I was going, but in a, a, a little bit different direction. Because, you know, David earlier on was talking about, okay, in, in like the, you know, we've had programs in place before where we tried to get creative, um, you know, earmarking new revenue streams for this. And, and I think we've done a really good job at that. And I think the AAA bond rating is, reflects a lot of the good financial decisions that we have made. Um, and you're absolutely right about the services. I mean, sure, we, that's where we're focusing our time and energy. But, you know, I keep coming back to the fact that we know that people don't want their taxes to go up, okay? So, I mean, we're, you know, in another city or town, they may be saying, look, at these are big ticket items. We need to be looking at an override, right? And we haven't done that, and I don't think we're, we're talking about doing that. But in the, in the absence of doing something a little bit more dramatic, $20,000, $15,000 here or there, you know, then you might be repairing a culvert once every four years with that kind of money. So I keep coming back to the fact that if we're not willing to, or, or interested in, nor do we think it's prudent, to raise our taxes, um, our tax rates significantly, be it on property taxes or water and sewer rates and we're kind of tapped out on local receipts i mean there's only maybe we'll get lucky you know yeah the hotels will go up a little bit here or there but we're not talking huge ticket items we really have to be looking at what resources we have available and how do we squeeze dollars out of those resources and i come back to land and i come back to zoning mm -hmm. because we need to find new ways to generate dollars turn property that isn't generating tax revenue now into tax property tax revenue generating property. We just and that's, putting that's our Hadley Hall back on the tax rate. Mm -hmm. So that's a long that's a long term discussion and it that's dovetails with David <laughs> saying we're that's not gonna happen tomorrow, but we yeah. really need to be having that conversation yeah. now to set ourselves up so that you know if yes. then we could earmark you know, yeah. buildings as they come up, you know, some, some more major development, you know, that's above and beyond that new growth figure of 150 or 200,000 that we normally see. So I really love how you wove that sweater into this conversation. You know, you like took that path and just came to that. I really like how you did that, but I agree. I mean, look at the capital. Sorry, I'll let you go. But as you look at the capital, we're tapped out with funds just to get a lot of our normal capital items we're going to prop two and a half we're having to do or we're doing debt exclusion debt ballots exclusion, yeah. just to afford these things that are <laughs> kind of not anything crazy asking for i mean chris had items all the he items. wanted from dpw that we couldn't do because it was asking the taxpayers for too much all the items so that were what do we do on your capital plan right now we're in the budget way back when and then they were taken out of the budget and put into capital on a rotating basis mm -hmm. and now that they're in the capital in a rotating basis and each department has grown doubled some of them tripled in size mm -hmm. it it's it's not feasible to run the capital that way capital should be for these major infrastructure projects just like you said and for buildings like she said a absolutely going back to your triple a rating when we were double a rated we were giving we were bypassed by so much grant money i would i asked a couple times what the number is on how many grants we were not given because we we're too rich of a community and we we have these ratings and i don't think these ratings really help us in the long run in the end. And I want to see the comparison. So what do you, what do you uh, have and here? David hasn't produced them. So. Well, along the lines of what Molly said, as far as looking at zoning and... <laughs> <laughs> You're throwing me under the bus, <laughs> You're zoning over here. Well, of course. It's <laughs> zoning. Zoning. But up since five. I know. <laughs> the, the zoning issue and adding to the tax base. Uh, and 
maybe it's time in, in the past, you know, we put caps on the size of buildings, we capped areas that could be developed. Maybe it's time to revisit some of those things. A good example is Bullyoke, Amazon Distribution Center. Put it. I'm not saying we need that. I'm just no. saying there's a lot of stuff that we could fit in our industrial zoned areas that mm -hmm. could develop a ton of tax revenue, would have next to no impact on the sewer system, things like that, that we could, you know, you've got the, the data centers and those things done, yeah. the technology park there, those are all hidden, nobody sees them, they're not an eyesore, they're tax revenues. So we have areas of town that we could be developing, especially in the industrial areas that are currently zoned industrial, there's untapped revenues there that we could, we could be and should be pursuing. Yeah. And in order to accomplish that, we really need, you know, an economic development slash planning direct, I mean, somebody yes. full time, but that's their mission. That's what they're doing. Are you agreeing, Chris? It's it's not yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And again, you know, like, you know, we've yeah. been really well served by volunteer boards, but we're just at a point that we're not going to move this ball forward until we get that in place. Yeah, yeah. Even that's with projects talking. like this yeah. and grant fund, all these things we're talking yeah. about, we don't have anybody to do these things really. Other, you know, we have David and he does a lot of things. <laughs> so we need somebody to assist. Right. And to anybody in things. the audience yeah. listening who's saying, there they go again, yeah. they're going to add staffing and then that's going to increase my, yeah. it's exactly the opposite. Yes. You make an investment in a position like that yes. to do the creative thinking to prevent us from having to go back to you to raise your tax rate. And all it takes is one successful development to come in to pay for that position for many years. Many years yeah. Okay, well, so, so let's get can we close this topic first? What do we What do we need with? Are you good with our plan and yep, culverts and some advice there? Is that yes, I will, I will keep coming to the board. I didn't. I also put a plan, as, but uh, I also want the board to uh, please put this on the on, on the radar so that yeah. we keep. Uh, I mean, I'm going to bring it up to our yeah. legislators next week too, as here's. Yeah. Yeah. Prime, this is something you guys talked about a week ago, and here, here's a report, so mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Thanks. So I'd like to work with you to get this plugged into the capital plan as well. Okay, so thank you very much. Like. Yes. Right. Um, okay, and then we have our SWOT analysis. You want to run through that quickly, Chris? Alex? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chairman, I broke the DPW into divisions mm -hmm. so that I'll be able to, some of them overlap, especially, but I just want to begin with the administration and the highway division. In the administration, we have, uh, we have a very strong uh, team right now, uh, sharing um, the new field superintendent and myself, and uh, we've been, and my philosophy has always been we've been challenging ourselves with and they have been uh, and we, uh, we also have goals we try to make sure that we produce so that things can and we lead by example so the they've been a very strong team we've also um, in terms of uh, our, our staff uh, equipment the board has been very grac gracious to us I inherited a department with a couple of good equipment, and the board has also added some to us recently. So, so we have a, a good. So those are the strength to do our, our job. But one of the things that is also, and then when I came on board, I also brought in a, a very a nice uh, software, a work order system, which helps us in our, our customer service. It catalogs all we do, and it take it said, and uh, when uh, both in and out uh, from residential and from in, inward we so every project we do we have a, a project cost like now that we've started the ditch maintenance we have also opened open a, a project cost so that every day be it internal staff or external um, contractor <coughs> gives us a plug in the equipment the numbers so that at the end of this process when I'm giving a report to the board I'll be able to give the board 99.9% accuracy of the cost and how we we go about it. It also helps us to catalog our cost and calls that come in areas where we have challenges because of 
residential or personnel or some of that things beyond our, our control. So this this has been very helpful to us. We've also trained the, the assistant, the administrative assistant, how to use it. We all use them. And uh, technology has also been a very strengthful, something that I long for. So I make sure that not only myself, but the field superintendent, we are, when we are in the field, we, we, we are able to log into the town website. We are able to take uh, calls. We are able to uh, communicate with both office and customers so we don't have to go from one end of the job site to the office. So, so that has helped us. Um, the weakness we have, Mr. Chairman, is, uh, as I said here, shortage of qualified staff. When I look at the highway division, Right now, we are attempting to do, for lack of a better word, I, I said we are trying to walk right now. I used, I used that, I always use that analogy. Uh, they are nice workers, able, but when they needed some motivation, they needed some reinforce, positive reinforcement. I, when I came in, I found out that most of the things that the highway division was doing, we're spending too much time at the commons and it became like a landscaping division. But now we are challenging ourselves to do more. We are all over the town. We, we're building catch basins, we put in pipes. We were able to, in conjunction with uh, a private contractor, we were able to build the, uh, the cover that nearly collapsed on Mill Valley Road. We are working on covers right now. And then I'm also making sure that training, both external training and in-house training is taking place. Even today, we did some today also, which, and I'm and also making them to read uh, equipment, like the transit, as opposed to the high structure where we, <laughs> so, <laughs> like, so, so these are fun, simple fundamental things, so we are beginning to, and, it, and it's begin to build their confidence. So that that's why I can come to the board and say and say we need to money for to fix road, or I can come to the board and say um, we're going to do this project, but fifty to sixty percent of the of the manpower is going to be the staff, and so when we need to bring in a contractor is because either we don't have such big equipment or it requires some complexity. So these are the type of things we are doing right now. So so we, but I'm also grateful that in this process of witness. The board has also helped us by giving us opportunity to hire two individuals beginning January. That will be those. My my hope is that those individuals they will come in with some good experience and good educational background, so that will enhance our productivity as a, as a department. We the if you look at uh, facilities, also a big problem for us, Mr. Chairman, as public works. Where we don't have space, so even when you come to the public works, we don't have space for to put in tables for for to do to do meetings, training, to even read our plans. We don't have space for education. We don't have space to even welcome the customers when they walk in. There's no place because so that has put a very big uh, negative dent on the perception of how public works is perceived. And that's also affecting the morals of the staff. Um, we are currently in a couple of trailers. Uh, I was told when they were installed, they were supposed to be temporary. But most of them are already 20 years <coughs> plus. And so I look forward to the board helping us so that we can get a place where for example, today I had some training done today. I had to request the fire chief to allow us to use the, the safety complex mm -hmm. because we don't have a place to, yeah, those kind of things, mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing, Mr. Chairman, is uh, if you look at the, the storm water, uh, I, I, use, I call it a threat because most of the things we're supposed to do, the town drainage system is not, we have a lot of surface water, but because of years of neglect or no drainage system, most of those things are impacting on our storm water. We don't have storm water preparation, our MS4 issues. But now we're beginning to address that, including the ditches, including what we talked about tonight about the culverts. 
and uh, we are building many, rebuilding many bases right now. The few bases we have in town, we are putting years ago as a blind base, whereby they collect water. That was true. But at that time, Mr. Chairman, the most of the areas today that, that are, were, are all covered with concrete and asphalt were not there. So Mother Nature was happy to take some of the water. Mm -hmm. Now we have a lot of water that even those bases cannot collect this water anymore because they are blind bases, they don't go anywhere, and they have, we have a lot of runoff water. So we're working on that right now, rebuilding them, uh, restructuring them, see how we can expand them to collect water. And we're also cleaning all these swells, we're building swells so that water can keep traveling from one end to the next. So that helps us to um, avoid the threats where we have it. And then the board has also helping us, giving us some equipment, like the recent equipment we bought, the mini excavator. We bought these kids. These are small equipment that we can use to go into small tight spaces. That helps us. The same thing with water. In the water department, Mr. Chairman, we have a good water system. We have, but we are very understaffed. But we are very grateful that the, we have, the, the staff we have are qualified staff. And not only because they are qualified, they also work 300%. They put in uh, whatever it takes to get it done. We have to do flushing, we have to do reports, and many, and uh, we also have to change valves. Most of our valves are uh, old, no, no qualified staff. In the past, we use contractors, but my philosophy has been that we should do much and use less contractors. And that in, that, in the course of that participation, we're able to come before the board and say, listen, this is what we're doing. We need more, uh, more, staff to qualify staff and also the cost will be cheaper at the longer because we have staff on the payroll the we don't have we don't have to be different things they're already on the payroll and so we're able to produce other materials <coughs> so we have what our water guys are doing well but lack of staff is our weakness uh, we also the marijuana well is also our weakness in terms of the fact that we don't have plan b in the case of Callahan well is running to crisis. There is no plan B for us to supply water to our customers. Mm -hmm. So, and, but uh, I'm also grateful that the board is working on how, get, working with us right now, how to to see how we can bring my water well back to to line. So, I know that uh, the board is talking with uh, Amherst and other ways to. So that is ongoing. So I think that will take us from weakness to strength. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do, Mr. Chairman. Um, the other opportunities is that we are taking advantage of our local contractors. Uh, some of them have been very helpful. Uh, they don't have, to, we, they, they respond to us in an emergency and a quick, no, a, a quick notice as opposed to where we have to wait for a longer uh, out of town or out of state contract. So that has helped us. Mm -hmm. The other weakness we have, Mr. Chairman, on water is that most of our infrastructures are very old. And so it, it goes back, so it's another line, just as we talked about culvert for the our water line, many of them are very old. Many of them are, right now, uh, has asbestos, and they also cannot carry the, the pressure that was required. So we are doing, uh, we're changing some of them, but we don't have enough manpower and funds to do that. In our wastewater, we are very blessed that we have three individuals who, are, who knows about wastewater. But at the same time, Mr. Chairman, they are, we are very understaffed in that place. So where we have uh, the chief, water, uh, chief wastewater operator and the assistant, they are, doing, they, are, they are spending more of their time in doing functions that uh, lower end entries would do. But because of lack of manpower, they are, they are there and it's costing us a lot of money. So, but I, my goal is, Mr. Chairman, is that when I come before this board next year, I want to be able to give a better update based on where we as the rate we are going right now. I think uh, our strength will improve when I come before the board next year. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Thank yeah. you, Mr. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. And on the DPW facility, we had some OPM funding yeah. to look at that.
25 grand. And you're aware of that, right, Chris? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Okay. I just had that thought as I was thinking about this and making sure it made it in there and everything. Okay. Any other questions? No. Good. No, no very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. doing that. Thank you. That was cool. um, okay. Last thing we have is the um, special town meeting warrant. Was there anything in particular there so that we the, needed to address right so now? So the update right now is, is that we still don't have a free cash number. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not in a position where I can recommend the budget. So no money, not funded. Not to be no yeah. <laughs> so we're just waiting on DOR for that. Mm -hmm. Parking? We're waiting on DOR to get us the certifier for cash. Uh, I don't think it's been served. No. I don't think it's been submitted to DOR. So I think that's where the, the hang up is. Are they waiting so, for? What are they waiting for? Yeah, to submit it to the DOR. Well, well, the, good, the, the deadlines weren't met. The deadlines weren't met to get the info to the town accountant. And now the town accountant is scrambling trying to get it to David and Linda are on the phone with them. So, Regularly. so my recommendation tonight is, is that uh, we post the warrant with your recommendation pending on the three financial articles. That would be the general fund, the enterprise fund, and the transfer to the capital fund. Uh, and that you uh, go to sign the warrant at your convenience. I mean, we can always vote on that at the public. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or on the floor. Yeah. 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 People like it though, no walking in line, but we did, yeah. Yeah, it would be good if we were able to. So, we want to wait until is it next week we're doing the public forum? Thursday, yeah. right? We need, Thursday. Thursday. We need to sign the. But we need to sign the warrant before. Yeah, the, I need to post the warrant post before next okay. Thursday. But then the handouts to go to town meeting could be printed with our recommendations in them rather than Absolutely. waiting for them. Absolutely. So, that would be the essential okay. Yeah. So the other thing is on the capital article, there are 15 motions in the long list. And so my recommendation is that we handle that using a handout. And that way we can just refer to items on a handout rather than reading, having Randy Eiser, the moderator, read 15 pages of uh, motions. Do we even have to do that or can we combine them into one? People don't like to vote block. Yeah, the finance committee's already taken a stand that they yeah. want to see the debt exclusions together. Yeah. I'd love them as much as I could. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. So we'd have a handout where kind of the water reserve, there's a block there. How do we meet your reserves above a block? Borrowing within the levies a block. All of it. Yeah. And then debt excluded is individual mm -hmm. items. Yeah, to the extent that I can block them together. I yeah. Can I just ask that on the handout we make them as big and distinguishable from each other as possible to just yeah. avoid any confusion? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then. Sounds good. What do we want to do regarding our vote here tonight? Do we want to do anything with Article 6, which is the North Hadley ball field, or do we want to just leave it on there for now? And if we want to take it off, we can do it we the can, day of. We can quote it. Yeah. Leave, leave, leave it on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Leave it on. Okay. So we need to. Yep. I'll make a motion that we sign the warrant or approve the warrant to be signed. Well, for anyone that, that's not watching the meeting tonight, you know, leave it on town meeting warrant and put a little explanation, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we can post the warrant. Pending our approval on those three finance articles. Second. Second. Any further discussion? We got two seconds. We're good. Uh, so, so just to be clear, as to what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm I expect to get the free cash number on Friday. If it's a good number, then I'll let you all know. I'll be posting on Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. You'll be meeting on Thursday. If there's a real problem with it, then. Um, we'll have to have a, uh, a, a discussion. Okay. Okay. And we'll have a discussion after. Well, do we want to have, do we want to post a meeting for us before that? Or we have two days? Yeah, we could do yeah, like yeah. 6.30 instead of 7. Yeah. But you'll know Friday. Yeah, I'll so we could Friday. post, we could post Friday if there's a need for a discussion before. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you want to start, though, at 630, just to in case we have to address anything before the public forum, or is that? Probably a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Since we're here, since we're here, it's not Yeah, I mean, I was planning on getting there. Five copies, please. Why do you always start with kind of the longest thing? Because I sit beside him. You can kind of <laughs> snuggle in over there if you want. But. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so, but how about we just have a vote on the Sorry. town meeting warrant, right? We didn't, yes. we didn't yeah. do that vote. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, then, let's just post for 6.30 next week and... Work, uh, at Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, the 24th. Yeah, not Wednesday. Because the town meeting. Town, uh, no, the public Wednesday. forum is on Thursday, yeah. At 7. We have something every night next week. But we're doing Thursday at 6.30, right? Thursday at 6.30 right. to the public forum. Okay. Yes, yeah. Unless, I mean, you want to wait until Friday and we can post it on Friday at 6.30 if I'm we want to have that, a public meeting. No, I'm just worried that we have to make any last minute changes to the, the warrant that we won't be able to address them during the public forum right. and then yeah. people will be complaining that they weren't informed for town meeting anymore. So, okay. So, well, two weeks. if we don't have the money, we just pass over them anyway. I mean, it's not, the information's there. It's okay. Right. Okay, so we'll do that and Quickly, David, town administrator report. I like to hit it all, but uh, do you have anything? We just no. did Highlights? We just did it last week. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> any, any big changes? Yeah, Nothing? so it's been all town meeting all the time at this oh, point. Um, you know what? I was so happy that I realized that you hadn't said that yet, and it just <laughs> came out. <laughs> <laughs> just it now. You you just it. couldn't go. You, you pull up the thing. <laughs> Uh, so my only my only update was actually just a query about the uh, human resources uh, position. Are we like Tuesday we're interviewing. Twenty oh, second okay. and the thirtieth. Thirtieth. We have uh, two rounds of interviews set up. Okay. For okay. Five. Five people. Five two, two days of right. interviewing. So ten total. No, there's two and three or something Six like that. Yeah, how many yeah. Did there's only five left. Like five and three and two. We, we five applicants. We offered eight. No, no, no. The summit already taken. They've already cut. Okay, yeah. But okay, great. Can we hear on that? Um, I think we can make a motion to adjourn here. Second. Oh, oh, any no announcements? No. Oh, announcements. I'm sorry. Announcements. Joy. <laughs> <laughs> Your phone's. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone off the wall here. Um, just three tonight. Um, we haven't uh, really kept up to date with these, which I'm, I'm sorry about. It locks over the summertime um, with our passing of our residents. Um, we have um, Francis Ness, who is a friend of the uh, Goodwin Memorial Library. Uh, condolences to her family. Uh, Rita Bishko, who's lived in town all of her life and uh, was quite prominent with St. John's Church and Mother's Club and even in the choir when the churches uh, merged. Um, quite a lady, our condolences to her family. And uh, we also have um, Mark Lewowski's uh, mother passed away, Isabella, and our condolences to Mark and his family at her passing. And that's all I have for tonight. Anyone else, any announcements? Oh, flu shots, everybody, it's out. There's a shortage, so try and um, get to your um, PCPs, your, have your kids get vaccinated. It's really important, uh, uh, the strain that's out there this year. So if you have the opportunity, please get one. Motion to adjourn? No. Second. Second. Yeah, I was looking up one, but I'll yell. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> yet? I, I, no, I mean, we can make it next week, too. It's a, uh, the Boobash sixth grade class fundraiser, Friday, October 25th at HES Cafe. I don't know what time it starts, but what is that? it should be coming home. It's like a middle school, or a elementary school dance mm -hmm. and Halloween celebration. <laughs> There would be a DJ there. You know that. Is that for adults or just kids? For kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Oh, we didn't get the one day liquor license oh, yet. Oh, no. <laughs> no. We could grant that. Yeah. All right. Um, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.